Hello, my name is Samuel Keith Harris, and welcome back to another episode of Morning Devotionals. Let's start our day with Jesus. Father, I thank you that we can come into your presence and worship you. Lord, we lift up your holy name. God, be glorified this morning. As we lean in to hear your word, God, teach us, instruct us, lead us, and guide us. We want to know your ways. We want to submit to your ways and be transformed by your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm chapter 84. Psalm chapter 84, and that's where we're going to be taking our text from. And we're going to start in verse 1. The scripture says in Psalm chapter 84 and verse 1, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I love that first verse. How lovely is your dwelling place where God dwells, Lord. Where you dwell, Father, it's a lovely place, O Lord of heaven's armies. And the scripture says that we should set our minds on on things above that we should set our minds on heavenly realities where Christ is at the right hand of God so let's and if you look in Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5 it shows us worship um, is going on in heaven <clears throat> to God upon his throne so if we meditate upon those scriptures we will see how lovely God is in his dwelling place and it will stir our hearts uh, in a long, there will be a longing in our hearts for eternity and for our God. Now let's look at verse two. It says, "I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord." So there's a longing when you know God. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord, to come into the presence of the Lord, to come into the gathering of the other believers to worship the Lord. I long, yes, I faint with longing. It's my utmost desire to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, my body, and my soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. So there's an excitement, there's a joy, there's a heartfelt praise. It says, with my whole body, with my soul, with my whole being, I will shout joyfully to the living God. We should have that response when we see the beauty and the majesty of our God. We shout joyfully because we see his glorious excellencies. We see he far surpasses anything else on this planet that we could worship, anything on this planet that we could ex- get excited about, any sport event, any anything. He's way more glorious. He's way more majestic. And so we should shout with praise to our God and not just give our shouts of praise to our favorite celebrities, movies, um, and sporting events. Now look at this, it says verse three, even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow builds her nest and raises her young at a place near your altar. O Lord of heaven's armies, my King and my God. Verse four, what joy for those who can live in your house, always singing your praises. What joy for those who can always live in your house. Did you know there's select people that can come and live in the house of God? Now, when I say that, do I mean not everybody's invited? No, everybody's invited, but only those who will lay down their lives and give their lives to God can come into the presence of the Lord. That doesn't mean that somebody can't come into a church service, but you're definitely not the habitation of the Lord. The Lord does not live in you. The Lord does not dwell in you the scripture says in psalm 15 who may come into the presence of the lord and it and it lists off a list of stipulations i I say go read that and basically the point of it all is don't think you can have a relationship with god don't think you can come into the presence of god and grow in him and know him intimately if you let sin run rampant in your life Now, do you have to clean yourself up to come to God? No, but when you come to God, it is impossible to come to him in faith um, because you're saved by grace through faith. It's impossible to come to God in faith and not be changed fairly rapidly. He'll break the power of sin in a moment and then he'll lead you on a progression of sanctification. So people will say, well, you know, I don't have to clean myself up to come to Jesus. Jesus will clean me up. Why are people still in the same place they were five years ago that say that? They're spot on with their statement. Their statement is spot on. 
You do not have to clean yourself up. Jesus will clean you up. But if you don't submit to his process of sanctification, you'll be wrestling with the same sins 10, 20 years down the line. Okay, so there's got to be a diligence to crucify the flesh. Though Jesus sanctifies us, we yield to his spirit to crucify the flesh, to kill those sinful desires that are lurking within us. Now let's go on. It says, what joy for those who can live in your house always singing your praises and there's a song inside of every born again christian who's been born again of the spirit of god made new by the holy spirit they've become a new creation and god's spirit is yearning for more of god within them the scripture says that the spirit yearns jealously through us now look at this in verse 5 it says what joy for those whose strength comes from the lord who have set their minds on a pilgrimage to jerusalem what joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord. That is where our strength comes from. Our strength comes from the Lord Jesus. And it says, who have set their minds on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Have you set your minds on a pilgrimage? Do you know that you're in the new covenant? You're a pilgrim, you're a sojourner on this current planet, right? This earth is not our home, we're just passing through. And I love this verse because it says, what joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord. You don't have joy if your strength comes from the world because your strength will be sapped quick okay but the joy of the lord is our strength and it says who have set their minds on a pilgrimage to jerusalem we're heaven we're headed to our heavenly home we we want to take as many people as we can with us but our joy does not come from just living a life on this planet our joy comes from knowing God amidst the crookedness of the present generation because we want to shine as bright lights to other people who are lost in darkness that they might come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Verse 6, when they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. <clears throat> it says when they walk through the valley of weeping, when they walk through a hard time, it says that even there it will become a place of refreshing springs and there's refreshing in the lord at all times no matter what you're going through if by faith you'll tap into the grace right the lord wants to satisfy you he put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness drink from the fountain of living water and be satisfied because jesus is all satisfying even in troubled times he is our joy he is our hope he is our comfort now let's look at this. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. Verse 7. They will continue to grow stronger and each of them will appear before God in Jerusalem. Did you know that you'll appear before God? Well, let's be the people that are growing stronger, growing more holy as we yield our members to righteousness, as we yield our body parts to righteousness. We'll grow more and more holy and become more and more like Jesus as we submit to God. Now it says, O Lord, God of heaven's armies, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. And we know that the Bible says that the Lord listens to the prayers of the righteous, but he detests the prayers of a person that ignores the law. Even the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination in the Lord's sight. The Lord does not like to listen to prayers of those who are wicked unless it is a genuine, genuine plea for help that he would come deliver them and save them. But look at this. It says, O oh God, look with favor upon the king, our shield. Show favor to the one you have anointed. Verse 10, a single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I love this perspective. A single day in the courts of the Lord, in the house of God, is better than a thousand anywhere else, doing anywhere, anything else, right? I pray that we would come away with the perspective that just being in the presence of God is the greatest thing that you could ever do. I pray that it would be what our heart yearns to do is to go to the house of the Lord, just sit and meditate and pray and listen to worship music, listen to praise music and praise God and worship him and exult in him and encounter him by the Holy Spirit. A single day in the courts of the Lord is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. So rather than have all the treasures, all the parties, all the alcohol, all the this, 
I'd rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God with no notoriety, with nobody patting me on the back, just me serving the Lord, being a gatekeeper. I'd rather have that than all the wealth of the wicked, than all the partying of the wicked, than all the women that the wicked have, than all vices. I love this perspective. For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. And that's true. The Lord gives us grace and he gives us glory. The scripture says that when Jesus is revealed to the whole world, those who are eagerly looking for him will be glorified with him, right? We'll enjoy his coming because he's coming in great power and great glory. Now we can experience the grace of God, which transforms us. People would say grace is just forgiveness or grace just means unmerited favor. But Paul said he labored more intensely than the other apostles according to the grace of God that was what? Working within him. So grace is a power that works within us that enables us to do what God has called us to do. So it says he gives us grace and glory. The Lord withhold, will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. So if you're doing right, if you're living righteously, if you're doing what pleases God, God will withhold no good thing from you, whether it be financially, whether whether it be healing, whether whatever it may be, revelation from the scriptures. If you're hungry and you're crying out, God will withhold no good thing from those who do right, who live righteously. Verse 12, O Lord of heaven's armies, what joy for those who trust in you. And there is joy for those who trust in the Lord because he comes to save them. He, he, he's their defender. He's our strength. He's our helper. He's our comforter. He gives us power over sin. He gives us victory through the blood of Jesus Christ. What joy for those who trust in the Lord Jesus. I pray that you would trust in him today. Father, I pray for everybody who's listening to me that they would trust in you, God. I pray that their heart would delight in you, that they would hunger after you, God. I pray that you would reveal yourself to them, Lord Jesus. And may they be empowered to live a holy life in Christ Jesus. May they turn their backs on sin and turn to you, Lord Jesus, for cleansing. May a fire burn within them and may they glorify you while they live their lives on this earth empowered by your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' precious name that I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Morning Devotionals, and I will see you next time.